We, meanwhile, in the world of politics, tracking a switch that is making headlines. New York City Councilman Ari Kagan is a Democrat no more. He is the second prominent Democrat to switch party colors this week. Upon his announcement, Kagan cited soft on crime policies as the main reason for his switch, saying, quote, the Democratic Party is doing everything possible in New York City to make everybody less safe. Well, his departure from the party follows Arizona Senator Kirsten Sinema's switch from Democrat to Independent on Friday, and her move comes just days after Democrats, of course, secured a 51st seat in the upper chamber in the Georgia runoff. So, Niall Stanich, White House columnist with our partners at the Hill, with us once again. And, Niall, let's focus on Councilman Kagan here first. He says becoming a Republican is something he's considered for years, but it was that one issue in particular that finally pushed him to do it. The perception that Democrats are soft on crime essentially lost them a seat on the city council. Is that right? That's his version of events, at least. It is certainly the case that Democrats generally face a political disadvantage on crime. There was a poll just before the midterms that gave the GOP about a 15-point edge in terms of which party is more trusted on that issue. Now, in Councilman Kagan's case, there are complications. And um, without getting too deep into the weeds of New York City politics, the council district map is being redrawn. He would have faced a Democratic primary for his own state, for his own seat, excuse me, had he remained a Democrat. Now that he's become a Republican, that is something that he can clearly avoid. So, as is always the case when people switch party, there's always the question of is this really driven? by principle or is it driven by self-interest? Well, and Kagan and Senator Sinema, certainly not the first public officials to switch party affiliations while still in office. This still is not something we see every day, though. No, it's not. And I think the reason we don't is it's very difficult to get away from the accusation of being a turncoat or betraying the party when you do this kind of thing. The other point is, you know, Democrats elected Senator Sinema as a Democrat. They elected in New York Councilman Kagan as a Democrat. And you then turn around and say, well, I'm not that anymore. I, that platform on which you elected me, I will now turn aside from. That is a difficult thing for obvious reasons and opens you to the charge that you have, in fact, betrayed the voters, even as you are claiming that you are being guided by some sort of internal moral compass. Um, again, a difficult thing to pull off politically, though it can be done. I, I hear you. And some might argue that if you ran as a Democrat and you were voted into office as a Democrat, it is not necessarily fair to constituents to change parties while in office. Are there any rules against this? There aren't typically rules against it. I mean, you can change, as Senator Sinema has done, as this New York City councilman has done. So it's not that it is banned, but it is, I think, highly questionable. Voters, broadly speaking, don't take kindly to it. Now, historically, there have been exceptions to this, particularly in the 1960s in the Deep South, when a lot of people who were once conservative Democrats became Republican. That's part of a whole bigger story about the civil rights movement and racial realignments in politics. As a general matter, changing your party affiliation after the voters have elected you to represent the one party and then say, now I represent another, is not typically looked kindly upon by voters for obvious reasons. Yeah, I appreciate it. Niall Standage, thank you so much for your time this evening. Thank you. Thank you for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of NewsNation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.